We're looking at the faces of Olympic gold medalists from Tokyo, three of the four of this Chinese crew won gold in this boat class. They were world champions in 2019. The two seat has come in from the Coxless 4 Xu Lu, uh, Coxless 4 Tokyo competitors as well. So these are the world's best quad scholars uh, from China and they're up against a new combination from Australia. Look at that focus. You've got to raise your game to beat the Olympic champions. This is the moment of calm that precedes the storm that is the race. Yeah, we're seeing here on the right of your picture three of the 11 Tokyo gold medalists that will be racing today. I think they're going to put on a good show for us. Well, here at Henley, it's a race for silver. It's a race for the Princess Australia. Race Challenge China. Cup. When I see that you are straight established ready, in 2001, named for like Princess this. Grace, whose brother Attention. won the singles here at Henley in no. 1947 and 1949. Ready, Rowing royalty, and these Chinese are the ones to beat. Rising crew from Australia will want to do exactly that. Let's see what kind of a plan of attack they have to take Attention. on the world's best. Go. It's the Princess Grace Challenge Cup. Australia and China, away they go. Yeah, and we heard the distinctive yell of the Chinese crew, similar to how they work in their eights as well. They actually shout out the first few strokes. It seems to help them keep in time, and you can see there, look at that crew, how neat they are going off the start, how synchronized they are together, even at that high rate. Yeah, and the Chinese have dominated their way through this event. Leander A, they took them easily on Friday. Yesterday it was New Zealand, three and three quarter length, a pretty strong verdict there from the Chinese. And they'll be looking to unfold exactly the same race plan. I watched both of those races and at this point they were already charging away. What can Australia do to respond? They're going to expect the Chinese to be fast. They've got to be at their most dynamic here. Yeah, we can see that yellow stripe down the legs of the Australian crew. Four pairs of legs really working together. Two bronze medalists from Tokyo here in the women's quad and two new athletes into this crew, but already they look like they are going to be no match for this crew from China on the right-hand side of the picture. Beautiful conditions here, 37 strokes a minute each boat, so it's stroke for stroke. But at the moment, the same number of strokes by the Chinese have put them, well, a, a, a few metres down the course further than the Australians already. And there we see the super focused, super experienced Chinese quad skulls. Three of them gold medalists, as you said. One dropping in from the Coxless four. And look at that. You can see everything moving together. This is a fantastic display of quality sculling here from this Chinese crew. Three of these athletes, like we've said, from Tokyo. Three who won the Princess Grace here in 2019. Will that established unit pay off here now as we move into the middle part of the course where you just need to make every single inch count? I think the Australians might have actually come back a little bit now from that slower start. Still pretty much stroke for stroke in terms of the rate. Maybe the Australians just edging it. But we can see again another great display of quality sculling here yeah, from this hard. Australian crew. Very hard to call it technically between these two crews. You can see Tara Rigney sitting at bow, having a glance across where are the Chinese. That means they're just slipping out her, her field of vision as she calls um, their crew to attack again. You need to really stay on terms, don't you, in this second quarter of the race. Losing overlap here can be very, very difficult to respond to. And so it's everything the Australians need to do right now. Don't wait until later. You've got to start doing it now, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. You don't want to give too much distance. Mind you, we've seen some brilliant races already this morning where we thought crews were out and they've come right back. And that's what Henley is so special for. It's for making those moments where the form book does get overturned. And you would say that the Chinese are ahead on that front. Rowing Australia raced in Poznan as well, where the Chinese won and they came fourth there. There has been one change to that crew. So will that seat change be enough to let them overturn the Chinese here? And they put themselves right back in contention now. Yeah, we see through all of these open events, they're a perfect opportunity to really test 
new combinations to refine the crews as they come towards the World Championships. And of course, we're in the first of a shortened three-year Olympic cycle now. So this is when you start to try to establish the core of the crews that you want to go through to compete in Paris. And it looks to me like the Australians, well, they've, they've found a rather easier, perhaps a bit more efficient rhythm than that far start phase. And they're sculling really pretty well. So two top class quads at the top of their game competing at the top of our program as we go into lunch at here at Henley Royal Regatta, the Chinese have not been too bothered by opposition to date. Leander and New Zealand went down to the Chinese quad machine here, the gold medalists. They're starting to come together a bit, Zoe. Yeah, again, I think we might have a problem here with the steering from both crews. This looks a little bit like mutual water, the middle, the centre of the river here, which could cause some problems as they come down. It looks like maybe three quarters of a length now for that Chinese crew. So the Australians have come back into the game. They've still got overlap on the Chinese. That could be enough for the Australians, but we'll need to see a change of gear from Australia if they're going to stop the Chinese national rowing team. Australia a stroke a minute above the Chinese. They'll need that advantage because the Chinese base pace at 34 strokes a minute has been pretty devastating for other crews through this regatta. Can Australia do it? Have they got an extra gear? Can they get an extra stroke or two a minute in there as they start to approach the mile marker and the final phase of the race? Yes, yeah, so it looks like we can see the Australian crew there just heading back on to towards their booms. Looking for a little bit more clear water there. You can hear them shout to each other, encouraging each other on. This Australian crew is building through their European season onto the World Championships again in September. But will that established unit from China be able to continue holding them off? Yeah, you want to be unbreakable in a crew like this, don't you? Whatever conditions, whatever competitors throw at you, you want to know that you've got the confidence to be able to respond. And I think the Chinese just look so calm, don't they? Every time they row down this course, they just like they're totally in control of the boat and they're totally in control of the race. But Australia have inched back a bit further, I think, as we come to the enclosures. The crowds will be yelling this final race before lunch on the biggest ever, the biggest ever Henley Regatta. It's China, Australia. China have led all the way down the track. And now we're coming to the mile in the eighth and the last 400 metres of the course. Yeah, these Chinese women are going to have one eye on that trophy. This trophy that three of them have won before, they are going to want to join their men's squad, who we saw earlier today winning in the open men's event. Can they hold off this charge now? It's starting to look a tiny bit ragged in that Chinese crew, which is something I haven't really seen from them yeah, before. Yeah, you're absolutely right. They've been pressed by these Australians more than anyone else has pressed them. The Australians came through the other side of the draw quite well. Um, and now it's China under pressure with Australia starting to stray towards the booms there. They need to correct that because they don't want to waste any time as this charge needs to be efficient. It needs to be the final charge from Australia. That looks treacherously close to those booms there from Australia. And I think that has given China the opportunity to relax back out and hold this off. But here come Australia. Can they put themselves back on terms now? Top class quad sculling from eight women at the top of their game coming to Henley Regatta. Here come the Chinese. They've dominated event, the event, but the Australians really took it to them. Overlap at the finish. That's the closest the Chinese have been chased by anybody. Wow. Top quality quad sculling in the Princess Grace. And the trophy will be engraved by the four names on the Chinese national rowing team quad for the second time at Henley Regatta. What a class quad. How was today's race and how did it feel to, to cross that line in front? As you can see, it's not an easy race, and uh, in that case, they can improve their performance later on. Why is it so important to come and compete at Henley? 就是亨利比赛是赛艇比较悠久的一项比赛，很传统的一项赛艇比赛，所以说我觉得我们来到这里可以跟世界上的选手更好的交流。Henley has a long history, and by coming here, they can communicate better with all the rowers coming from all over the world. How would you describe Henley to people at home, back at home in China? 
、呃，在这儿我能感受到，就是周边大家很多人都在参与赛艇，都能参与到赛艇比赛中来，然后有很多就是氛围也很好。Well, by racing here, she can feel the atmosphere that a lot of people will join the race, join the rowing regatta.